Thanks, Julie. Good evening. My name is Mary Maslowski. I'm the chairperson of the Harwich Historic and Historical Historic District and Historical Commission. We are convening the meeting of February 15, 2023, at 6 p.m. We are holding this meeting uh, located at 732 Main Street in the small hearing room at Town Hall. Uh, we will um, start off with a roll call. Uh, Bob Dome. Brendan Loney. Lynn Zalisak. Julia Eldridge. And before we get started this evening, Massachusetts law requires that anybody who is in attendance who intends to record or either audio or video record this meeting to notify the chair at this time. Hearing none, we'll proceed. We'll call to order our first public hearing. It is HH 2023-01. John Barone and Karen Gagney, uh, owner through their agent, Coastline Construction, has filed a notice of intent. Uh, the project proposes partial demolition to demo the existing structure, leaving the foundation and construct a new dwelling in the same footprint of the original foundation. The structure is over 100 years old, according to the town assessing and state records, and is located at 14 Atlantic, Atlantic Street, uh, map 6B, parcel L140. And this meeting is, um, this public hearing was continued from January 18th, 2023. Good evening. Please state your name for the record. Hi, good evening. Um, Jack Wishart, Coastline Construction. Good evening, James Norcross, uh, attorney for the applicants. Thanks for coming back. Sure. If you'd like to go through your application again and some of the revisions from last time. Yeah, um, I would be happy to just thank you again for your time and reviewing and thank you for your considerations and, and comments. Um, since the last meeting, the uh, homeowners, John and Karen and I have worked hard to provide a revised plan to accommodate the request to reduce the overall height of the building uh, by approximately one foot, thus reducing the size and scale overall of the build. Um, so the plan that has been re-proposed has a few changes to accomplish that <coughs> foot reduction. Um, so overall, we had changes to some floor heights and the roof lines have been altered to create a more formal gable front gambrel. Mm -hmm. um, you will also notice the addition of two porticos. Uh, the floor plan changes resulted in a couple of door and window location changes, but we didn't change any of the sizes of the elements. Uh, we are very pleased with the changes and hope you like them too. Um, and happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Great, thank you. Who would like to start? Bob, would you like to start? Uh, no, I'll pass. Okay. Brendan, anything? Um, no, thanks for coming back. Um, so the portico is new. The pitch on the roof. Give me the pitch last time. It's a five pitch now, but you went from... Was a four. It was a four? Up top, yeah. Yeah, so the best you could do was the five. Um, yeah, that's all I've got. That's fine. Lynn, any comments? No, just uh, I'm, I'm happy to see see the uh, um, the change. It's, it's still a, a nice looking building. Thank you. Yeah. Julie. I've got nothing. Any comments from the public? Yes. Please, could you uh, state your name for the record again? Hi, Dan Griffin. We're an abiding neighbor. And we have any discussion, you know, with them and uh, not trying to be totally prohibitive to what, what they're doing. Um, but it, with the accommodations, so, uh, but from uh, a standpoint, the, uh, we have a, a concern with, I know they, um, you know, there was a concern of mass. They brought it down 10 inches. I, can I ask the height of the second floor? Uh, the side of the heck second floor. Yep, it's over eight feet. Is it eight feet now? Or? It's over eight feet. It's over eight feet. Yep. And, and the ceiling is vaulted. That's correct. Right. Yeah, so, absolutely. Just um, like everybody these days. So, you know, it is a small thing. It went to the, you know, the, the mass it is, a, is a concern with the neighborhood. But I think they are trying as best to confirm it. I appreciate them doing the height. The only, the, with the new rendition that we just saw, they did forward to it. The, the, uh, the porticos, in, in our opinion, make it look kind of like an airplane. And, and the last time when I asked about the side, you said it wouldn't stick up. You said it was not going to stick up more than six inches, and now we're three and a half feet on each side. And I honestly, that is the the only uh, concern that we have really is, you know, with the, um, you might have done it for aesthetics and floor plan, but you know, your, your floor plans, 
The mass didn't really drop because the second floor got two feet bigger and the new design longer. The roof line is in a true gambel now. It's a double dormer, so the, you still have the mass. I don't, I'm not opposed to it, but I, uh, the only comment that I have, I don't really think those porticos, they look kind of like an airplane jet. as, as not really a uh, typical of the uh, gambel style. So that's, that's my comments as a neighbor. And is that... Um are you on the north I'm side not, of them? We're behind, so we see both the uh, porticos on the left and the right, and that, and the uh, that's you know the uh, Oshu side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the um, and I, I really totally re the appreciate the comment there because it was something that was changed from previously, and right. so in and redeveloping the new plan, we realized there was no protection from uh, the elements on the entries. So, which was the addition of the... Right, but you have the front porch that you can come in the front door there, that's protected. And now you have a front door and two doors either side and double sliding doors on the front, so you have like five doors. But, and, but it's more, um, it's not about your floor plan of the doors, I think the aesthetic look of the house, is not, it's more just the, the wings. Um, that, that, and, um, what are the, Jack, what are the height of those will be... Uh, they're going to be off the ground just over 11 feet, 12 feet. So they will mostly be blocked by the plantings or a fence. Well, there, well, there aren't any plantings because the plantings are on the way down. Okay. I guess our only um, comment would be, again, it, it's part of the redesign. It was something that was pointed out with Jack and the clients. and. I don't think those affect the massing. I suppose it's a design characteristic that not everyone may like, but I don't think it impacts really a view or a massing issue. What, was the why problem. do you need a three and a half foot roof uh, over each entry? Well, excuse me. I don't, oh, sorry, excuse just me, I'm that's sorry. okay. I didn't thought we were just discussing. It. Well, Jack, I guess is there if you wanted to point out your reasons for the uh, they extend halfway over the <laughs> first step down so they cover the entirety of the three-foot landing plus six inches and yep in an appreciation of the mass they opted against pillars for um, corbels Anybody else from the public have any additional comments? Anybody else on the board have comments? Yeah. Are you ready for to close the public hearing? Yeah. Oh, sorry. All right. So the chair will entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I move. A second. The motion's been made by Lynn. Is there a second? A second. This motion's been made by Lynn, seconded by Julie. To close the public hearing, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any in opposition? Hearing none, motion carries. So then we'll entertain a motion on, um, on the application. Motion to approve HH 2023-1, filing date December 14, 2022. Hearing date February 15, 2023, for 14 Atlantic Street map 6B parcel L140. I'm sorry, L 140. Mm -hmm. John Barron and Karen Gagney, applicant Jack Wishart from Coastline Construction. Record information BK35482 PG143. Um, demolition proposal is partial so historical significance listed. In town's historical prop inventory. And pros, uh, the proposed demolition would not destroy or substantially diminish the historic value or significance of the subject's building. Determination no demo delay period imposed. And conditions none. Okay, so motion's been made by Brendan. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion has been made by Brendan, seconded by Bob. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition? 
hearing none, motion carries. Sorry about that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the second matter on our agenda tonight is uh, HH 2023-02, it's Coastline Construction Owner. It's filed a notice of intent. The project proposes a partial demolition to construct an addition. The structure is over 100 years old according to the town assessing records and state records and is located at 466 Route 28, Unit 1, Map 13, Parcel F8. This is continued, also continued from January 18, 2023. Thank you. Uh, Welcome back. Good evening again. Um, <laughs> down, please. Uh, so, we included some options with shutters. Uh, Mr. Don't completely appreciated your comment on that last month. And I made some changes to the elevations so you could see a few different looks. Is that like anchor? Um, <laughs> And I think one of the, one of the important kind of components to deciding on where to put the shutters, in our perspective, is not um, is the cost. We have a forty-five thousand dollar for shutters for the entire property. Um, it's just it's cost prohibitive, really. Um, we want it to look awesome, and we want to capture the historic beauty of the town as well as put our own stamp on it uh, as a business um so i i think at the outset we'd just like to entertain like which which elevations we wouldn't have to put them on um and then we also had an option for a farmer's porch which if we didn't have to do shutters everywhere else we would be able to put that capital into a front porch which we felt was a worthy addition mm -hmm. uh, and we're seeking thoughts and comments I didn't mean to make this overly complicated but I, our How goal would, would like be to to, to work with uh, 2.0 which would add shutters at the south elevation and a farmer's porch. Uh, I'm certainly pleased with the uh, shutters on the front. I think that, that looks uh, very good. Um, I really don't see a need on the uh, north or even east side to have shutters. Okay. They're really not that visible um, uh, from the road. Uh, the, the only other one is the west side. Mm -hmm. It is pretty visible. Um, yeah, it's actually very visible because you turn into the parking lot there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's I'd, I'd be kind of interested that, interested in that. Uh, the farmer's porch, um, I don't have any objection to it, um, but you don't have to do it either. I, I think it is a nice addition. Mm -hmm. That's that's it for now. All right. Brendan? Yeah, I, I feel the same way. How the east side, north side, really don't have a preference if those shutters are not there. Um, I know you're trying to put your stamp on the building as far as you know, uh, what Coastal likes to do for, you know, when you pull in, that's what you're going to see. Um, my preference would definitely be on the front at a minimum. Yeah. 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 And the porch, that's, if, if you want to do that, that's fine. Okay, so at a minimum, front shutters for me. And, on the other side. Lynn? Same. Yeah, I like the shutters, and I agree 
on the, uh, the side, the parking lot side, definitely pan the porch. It does add a nice feature to it. Enjoy. Um, I would have to grab like on the front and the porch is nice. So I guess from my perspective, I do see Bob's point about the shutters on the left, um, <coughs> on the west, sorry, um, on the west left elevation. Um, for me, again, it's most important in the front and I like it with or without the front porch. So um, either would either would look nice to me. Um, just a question, Bob, if it was, if they did them on the west elevation, would you want them upstairs and downstairs, or would you be satisfied with downstairs well, and not upstairs? I mean, they're not now because they're small windows. Right. So yeah. I could probably go either way. I, I really don't. Yeah, the building now just has them on the bottom. Yeah. All the other buildings have shutters when you pull into that right. courtyard kind of feel. Yeah. So I, I guess it's really just a preference. I mean, I, I understand the objective and, you know, putting your stamp and your design on the building and then still trying to please the front. Yeah, place. and, and I, know, I, I get it. I get Joe's it. not here this evening. I know his comment would be, we really don't want to put them on the west elevation. Um, that would be his comment. And I think that would be consistent with other buildings in town that do have them on the front of the, facing the street, but not the, not the sides. And based on the price point you do in wood or percent Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Be all, yeah. So wood shows. It's. So you're looking for. It's not like. I would like to get approval with. Just the south elevation. And the porch. Yes, sir. Okay, so 2.0. Yes, sir. Yes. Any yeah. comments or questions from the public while we're still reviewing? Okay. Bob? Um, <coughs> I, I think I could go with that. <clears throat> okay. I think just it's the front is really the key. Uh, Anybody else? I agree. I mean, I think the Route 28 side is going to be the right. most visible portion. And, and and I do like the addition of the uh, porch. The porch. Nice. That looks yeah, nice. Nice. Yeah. And may have one time actually had something like that. Yeah. It doesn't look as much of a business as it does. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. So is there any, any other questions or comments from the board? Not uh, just one quick one. The cap yeah. on the casing, the window casing. Are you using that in copper, or is it just going to be PVC, uh, or? Probably metal flashing. No, just metal flashing, something. Okay. All right. All right. I'll make the motion. How do you want to? No. First, close. First we need to close the public hearing. Perfect. Second. <laughs> so Bob's made a motion. Brendan is seconded to close a public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Hearing none in opposition, motion carries. So then we'll take a motion on the application, if you'd like to walk through it, Bob. Sure. Let's get the right one through. Okay. Um, motion is on case number HH2023-02. Uh, filing date, December 15, 2022. Date of hearing. Uh, hearings is um, February 15, 2023. <coughs> Uh, property and parcel 466 28 unit 1, map 13, parcel F8B1. Uh, owner Coastline Construction, applicant uh, Jack Wishart. Uh, coastline Construction, BCRD recording information BK34654, page 83. Uh, Subcrew building is, uh, is uh, year built 1850 in source. Uh, to terminate was macros. Mm -hmm. uh, demolition proposed a partial, and the uh, work describes to partial pro uh, project proposed a partial demolition to construct an addition. Uh, historic significance: it is listed in the town historic property um, inventory, uh, and the 
Yes. Yeah, the list didn't play. Um, the proposed demolition would not destroy or substantially diminish the historic value significant <coughs> of subject buildings. Mm -hmm. And uh, determination, uh, no demolition delay period imposed. And conditions would be that uh, um, that we approve plan 2.0 as submitted in the package. Date 2 3 23. Date of the plans. Mm -hmm. 2 3, you said? Uh, yeah, February 3rd. 23. 23. Okay. Okay. So, motion has been made by Mr. Doan. Is there a second? Second. Bob has made the motion. Lynn has seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you very much for the Thank redraft. You. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I really appreciate it. Yes, it is cold in here. What'd you do that? Wait for it. We're just touching the table. It's good. I know, right? Yeah, of course. Next matter we have on the agenda, it will open the public hearing for HH 2023-04. Sandra Wyckoff, owner, through their agent Jeff Handler with the Handler Company, has filed a notice of intent. The project proposes a full demolition to demo the entire structure, leaving the existing garage. The structure is over 100 years old, according to the town assessing records, and is located at 24 Freeman Street, map 14, parcel Z31. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening, committee and, and if chair. You, if uh, you could uh, state your name Jeff, for the record. Jeff Handler, representing 24 Freeman Street, Sandy Wyckoff. I'd like to thank you all for um, having this hearing for our modification for our original plan that we submitted, which was approved for the demolition of the foundation that was granted back in November of 2022 for the Freeman Street residents. Um, I have with me tonight uh, our architect, Antonio, why don't you come on up, and our engineer, uh, Marshall, and I'm going to get out of the way. Okay. <laughs> and let the experts do their thing. And if there are any questions for me or Sandy, the owner, we're here to answer. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, and um, thanks for your time tonight. I'm Antonia Butwell, the architect for this project, and I'll give you some background on the application that was submitted for the rebuild at 24 Freeman Street. Uh, the central portion of the house was originally constructed in 1815, according to the tax assessment uh, records. Um, as you can see in the photos, there were a number of additions um, added to since then, including porches, uh, the garage, and the kitchen area, which connects the garage to the main house. Uh, based on information provided to the owner when she purchased the house, um, these additions were believed to have been added in the 1940s, and they now cover the original structure on all four facades. Um, the style of the house is a Cape Cod classic architecture style with a dormer along the front facade and a dormer along the back facade. Um, and over the past year of planning uh, process for this project, we've um, obviously looked into both renovation and uh, rebuilding, and I'll give you some of the reasons why we've ultimately uh, requested to do a rebuild for this project. Um, so unfortunately, the existing home um, is in poor condition, particularly at the foundation and at the existing basement. Uh, the basement has had a history of terrible mold issues. Um, the owner even had to move out for a few years uh, while it was being remediated. Um, there is still mold in the house, so they don't feel that it was completely uh, fixed. And uh, the house really does need a new and uh, properly waterproof basement. Um, so looking at it from a lens of renovation, that would require lifting of the house to put in that new basement. Um, so we brought in uh, the structural engineer, Marshall, um, who's going to speak to some of the uh, structural issues after this introduction. Um, but there were a number of structural members identified that would need to be brought up to code, um, along with other code issues, which we've identified 
um, going through the uh, house, including ceiling heights, staircases, uh, head height issues at the staircases, um, insufficient insulation, and electrical wiring throughout. So um, between the cost to lift the house and put in the new basement and the new foundation and bring up all those elements to code um, before even getting into a renovation, um, it was becoming uh, a much bigger cost burden than expected. So then um, on top of that, they want to do a renovation to make the house more livable uh, for their family, uh, which would essentially involve uh, replacing all of the existing um, exterior and interior finishes, building elements, um, building systems, HVAC, plumbing, etc. cetera. Um, so with the, uh, these costs in mind, uh, we've determined that it would be far more cost effective to rebuild the house uh, than try to restore the house. Um, so with that being said, I'll get into kind of what we're proposing for the uh, new house in its place. Um, most of our, if not all of our design decisions kind of would always go back to trying to preserve the original um, and general style and appearance of the existing house. Um, while hopefully improving some of the areas where the additions um, could have used improvement. Um, so we've made an effort to base the new roof lines, massing, materials, um, et cetera, on the existing house, um, and would like for the new house to fit into the character of the neighborhood um, as the existing house does, um, but also accomplish the client's goals of a up-to-date and safe home. Um, so you can see the existing and proposed elevations in the package that we uh, submitted to you, and we'd like to hear your feedback on the um, new design um, and answer any questions that you might have. Um, but I'll give Marshall the floor uh, to kind of go over some of the structural findings of the ex uh, existing house. Yeah, hi, Marshall Popper. I work with Coastal Engineering Company. Thank you. And can before you leave, can you just make sure that you each sign the, yes. the attendance sheet? So I was charged with doing an assessment of the foundation and the structure as a whole, um, trying to give an idea of, of what would be required to update this house for current code provisions. So the first thing we looked at was the foundation. We saw signs of overstress, um, just kind of uh, the age of structure was really showing, uh, loose brick in places, and, and kind of dangerous conditions where we were seeing a lot of bowing in of, of the foundation. So in the, in the first iteration of this, it was kind of replace the foundation. Um, then we started chasing kind of the issues up. So the first floor, there were a lot of split members, discontinuous load paths. There were um, uh, unsupported members and, and things that just generally did not meet code. So as we started chasing this, we, we started to realize that we essentially would be rebuilding the structure one by one. And in that, as Tony has said, Tony has said, we were essentially, it became onerous on the project budget to keep it as a new structure and, and essentially rebuild it from the inside. So that's where we kind of landed in, in as far as recommending that we replace the structure in whole. So, and I, and I think you can see there, like the, the overall kind of project is, is the, the new proposal is fairly similar to what is there. So as far as the new structure is concerned, all the structural elements would be, be covered up. So there's not much to see, but efforts will be taking what we can on the foundation to mimic what is currently there. Okay, thanks. Um, who'd like to start? Brendan? Sure. Um, increase in height from the original? Yep. So that's um, your plan there. Original was 21 feet high and proposed is 24 feet high. 24. <coughs> Mostly to um, help with the dormer pitch. And make the second floor work, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, in the garage stays. Garage is going to stay, yeah. That's all I have. All right. Bob? Um, yeah, the, um, uh, you know, of course, any house from the 1800s is not going to meet current code. Mm -hmm. You know, and, I, and everybody tells us this and comes in with the story, the sad, sad story. So, I'm not always that sympathetic towards that. Um, well, what I do like is, is that you really have maintained the, the, the size and the look of the house. Um, you, you move the door and things, that, 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 that's fine, but the windows and everything uh, look good. And I did see you raise the roof on the front part that was originally probably a porch or something or enclosed because the windows, the original one, the windows touched the top part. 
So you must have added some right. height Right, we there. add a little bit of height to the first floor um, okay. to make it a little more proportional with what we yeah. added to the second floor. They'll still press to the freeze board though, right? Say that again, sorry. They'll still press to the freeze board? Yes. Yeah. What do you mean? Uh, the freeze board is just the, the trim. You have your window here, trim it's always pressed right up against it. So it's going to look, it's it's look very... It's not shown that way, but... Yeah, yeah it's not shown that way, but it's oh, going to okay. look like the original. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was trying to clarify. Yeah. Okay. Good. So it is um, going to look closer. Closer, yeah. It's just it's tough to see in that mm -hmm. detail. Okay. And are you still doing a brick facade around the base? Yes, we'll do a painted... It's currently a painted, painted white. Brick, yeah. So we're going to do that along the exposed portion of the foundation. Okay, good. Um, no, other than that, of course, I always hate losing chimneys, but mm -hmm. uh, I don't know why people don't want fireplaces anymore. Uh, anyways, yeah, other than that, I mean, I do appreciate the scale and almost the total replication. Yeah, so. that's really close. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good job. Lynn, anything yeah. from you? No, thank you for keeping it as close as possible. Um, is it the same width? It's the same width at the ground floor. Um, at the upper floor, you'll see that those, those doorways. Wider. We added a little bit of floor space um, to give to the upstairs bedroom areas. Yeah. And uh, it's going to have shingles like it has yeah. now. Same materials um, on the last page. Kind of get into the materials, but. Oh, okay. That's all. Julie? I'm good. Nothing? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> and you said same materials on the shingles, so six over ones on the windows, too? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, are there, is there anybody from the public that wishes to comment or ask a question? We did have one um, email from uh, a neighbor, so I just want to read that into the record. It's uh, from Carolyn O'Leary. It was dated Monday, February 13th, 2023. It was addressed to our assistant here in the building department. Uh, it's addressed to the Historical Commission. I live at 23 Freeman Street, directly opposite 24. This letter is in support of the demolition of 24 Freeman Street. In a town as old as Harwich, the fact that the building is over 100 years old does not automatically mean it is, it is of historic value. Sandra Wyckoff and Jeff Lang have been loyal supporters of our town in their property has always been impeccably maintained. I'm sure the new construction will be a beautiful addition to our street and town. Carolyn O'Leary. Um, so that that was received right into the record. Is the board ready to close the public hearing and take a vote? I move to close the public hearing. So Julie's made a motion. Bob is seconded to close the public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Hearing none in opposition, motion carries. And then who would like to take a stab at the um, motion for the decision? Bob, Brandon, Julie, Lynn? Yeah, Lynn. You want to do it? All right. Lynn, don't mean Lynn can do it? Okay, Lynn. <laughs> we'll give it a go. shot. <laughs> uh, case number HH2023 4, and a wide filing date December 20th, 2022, date of hearing uh, February 15th. 2023 property map parcel 24 Freeman Street map 14 parcel Z 31 owner Sandra Wyckoff applicant Jeff Handler BCRD recording information BK 23858 page 34 uh, subject building is built 1815 source used determine age town assessing records demolition proposed full uh, brief description of work. The project proposes a full demolition to demo entire structure leaving the existing garage. <clears throat> um, the town is, the building is listed in the town's historic property inventory. Uh, the demolition would not have substantially diminished the historic value significance of any of the buildings, subject buildings. Determination, no demolition delay imposed. Um, conditions, none. Other than reference the plan, probably. Okay. Thank you. You okay with that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so, there are some photos that we usually don't get. So yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, 
It's two hundred dollars of photos, right? I <laughs> yeah. realize that. So <laughs> you keep them. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Um, but so if I say as submitted on the application, it's a great way to see what it really looks like under there. Yes, it is. Okay, so I've said as submitted, conditions as submitted in the application plans, schematics, and photos. Um, so we have a motion. That's okay. I put it in, you said it. <laughs> so we've got the motion made by Lynn. Is there a second? Second. So motion's been made by Lynn, seconded by Bob. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. I was I was thinking more of these than right, I was. Right, those photos, yeah, yeah. Those photos are having to do with <laughs> I don't think we've gotten photos in a long time. <laughs> no, we haven't. Else. They were very telling. <laughs> I'm not sure why that was set up that way, but it was, so I'll send it back that way. And it's still freezing cold in this off in this room. All right, the next matter on the agenda will open the public hearing for HH 2023-05. John Carey, owner, has filed a notice of intent. The project proposes a partial demolition of uh, demolition to relocate the front door, add and remove windows and demolish the existing chimney, roofing, and siding. The structure is over 100 years old, according to the town assessing records, and is located at 5 Bells Neck Road, Map 10, Parcel G1. Hello. Hello. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> so walk us through, please. Yes, I will. I brought you some samples. Great. We like samples. No, we have no windows, but samples. <laughs> so I think I corrected the application this time um, so I will be lifting the structure up and putting on a new foundation which I think we already have approval for uh, I am going to be relocating the what would have been the main entry door and then kind of realigning windows mostly the same I'll be adding windows on either side uh, either gable end up on the third floor and I'll be putting a dormer on the north side which really won't be visible from almost any vantage point. Um, I'll be removing the vinyl siding and putting one of those two on there. It's a hardy clapboard uh, and it will be white. Um, the windows will be uh, kind of a, an appropriate historic look, um, but it will not be the eight lights or whatever. And there will be vinyl, but they'll probably be black or white. Um, and then uh, there's going to be some year-round housing in it, which is very needed in this town. So that's kind of where I'm at. Great. Thank you. And thank you for the samples. Yep. Um, who would like to start? Anybody have any questions? Bob? I'll go ahead. Sure. All right. Um, so you, you're saying you're moving the chimney, but there's really no chimney there. They're just the metal. Yeah. There's, there's, the there. original chimney is long gone. There's a, yeah. a metal tube sticking up, uh, and that will be gone because I'm removing natural gas from the property. Right. Yep. Okay. And describe again on the first, on the windows on the south side, uh, you, you are moving them slightly or somewhat? To on the south side. That's facing Route 28. So, yeah. So if you're looking at the elevation, there's four across the top. Those will all stay. Um, and then the bottom, f right now there's three, and there's a door on the bottom right. Yeah. Uh, I'll, right. When that door comes out, a window will go there like it looks like it probably yeah. would have originally, and the door will just squeeze between those middle windows. So you really won't be able to tell. And then on the, um, on the west side, there's two doors that are put in after the fact. Right. Those are going to go away. So on, on the front, you actually you're moving the upstairs slightly too, aren't you leaving more space in the middle where the door is? Well, if you look at it, um, they're not equal space. The three on the on the left side are all farther to the left, and then there's a bigger gap between 
kind of the two right side okay. um, because of the way the floor plan was the if you okay. look at the building the left side was the big classrooms so you had three right. windows in there right so it, it okay. they're not equal I'm gonna yeah. do what I can to align them more appropriately but right. um, yeah I want the building to look good yeah um, yeah, and, and yeah, the north side, um, taking out windows, whatever that is. Take this paper. Um, the north side, a lot of those windows aren't there. Right. Um, I think I'm removing two, and two are already gone. Yeah, that, that's fine. They're not really visible from the street or no. really only the neighbor. You're definitely so, not allowed on that neighbor's property. I know right. that. And, of course, you are keeping all the trim and stuff. All, and all the trim is in very good shape on the building. It's all going to get sanded and painted. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Really that's all to stay. Yeah, yeah. I was shocked at how good it, good it was. Yeah, it's old growth lumber. <laughs> <laughs> Most of those have any paint on it. It's still fine. <laughs> so. Good to hear. Uh, I think that's all the questions I have. All right. Anyone? I think yeah. Brendan covered most of it. Um, on the hardy plank, are you gonna do the smooth or the texture? I was gonna ask you guys. <laughs> I don't know which one I like better. I haven't made decisions, so I'm, I, I would think the smooth. smooth. You yeah, like smooth? Yeah, yeah. Could, could that be? That's I would, I would do the smooth. <laughs> that's that's a lot of good. I'm just curious why. Why you like oh. smooth better? Well, because it doesn't look, look that good, actually. The smooth? <laughs> no, the the, the texture. Yeah, yeah, I mean the smooth will just look closer to. I just haven't a, seen. I haven't seen them a lot on clapboard. It will yeah. look a lot. I was similar. just curious for your opinions, <laughs> no. that's all. What do you do for a reveal? Just the, is it four inches or is it five? Uh, you can do five or six. Five or six. It's a big building, so I don't know which one is bigger, better, but probably five is yeah. probably standard. Yeah, the five yeah. would be, yeah. Usually yeah. the historic homes are like anywhere from three and five-eighths to four and a quarter. You'll oh, see okay. that they're tighter. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you could stay to five with that product. I think that product, you know, I don't know if you can go any smaller, but five inches would be fine for the scale yeah. of that building. Yeah, the, the texture, it also gathers dirt. And, mm -hmm. you know, that I can mold. see. <laughs> that I can see. I was just, I was just curious <laughs> yeah. because the both of you were the same on it, so yeah, that's why I wondered. Just, yeah. um, anyone in the public that wishes to comment? Go ahead. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Please, if you could just state your name for the record. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't been able to find these these plans on, online. I'm not, I'm not that good at navigating. I don't even know if they're on your site. Um, uh, I did see one of my neighbors had uh, printed it out, and unfortunately, I missed the, the planning board. Um, but. The, uh, the question about the trim I appreciate because I'm not sure what's being preserved in, in this. You know, there's a, there's a historical building, uh, and if the exterior is being removed and added to, I'm not sure what historical aspects are being So I can just tell you the, the application that's before us is a notice of intent. So that's because the building is over 100 years of age. We have the authority to impose a demolition delay um, on on any demolition that's done on the on the building. So what he's just told us is that he's going to re um, he had already come before us on the foundation. The foundation is going to be um, have a brick veneer placed on it. The um, siding is going to be replaced with. Um, this is a historic grade siding that um, gets used, and he's just told us that he's going to be um, keeping all the trims. So, and the trims in, uh, were in good shape. So, so the trims include <coughs> the, the corner pieces that look like columns, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. the yeah. eaves of the, the roof, that the designs along there, mm -hmm. the Greek. It's going to look exactly how it looked when it was brand new. Except for it's going to be dormers and gables. In the back. There'll be one dorm on the back, yeah. It's going to look a lot better than it looks now. Um, one of the things, <coughs> we mentioned vinyl windows. Um, one of the things that older structures tend to have is 
it. There's and and you can and I'm, on the north windows you sort of see it. There's like a there's like a header over the window and framing around it. Um, I know that there's just plywood there, but you can sort of see, you know, as opposed to just a commercial window. There's that's part of the plan. It is. Yeah, all the original trim will be restored. So that's what have, have you seen a copy of the plan at all? I, you want to just give it a shot? So yeah. I can give it. Yeah, yeah just give it. Thanks, Brenda. Duncan. Duncan Berry, 3728 Charlie. Just, I just wanted to pipe in and give my enthusiastic and support for it. I think he's done a very thoughtful job. The idea of um, preserving all the historical elements, the design elements, proportion, scale, the whole thing's great. Modernizing where you can. It's what do you want? That's great. And getting housing too. I and, know, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and bingo. Housing. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> getting housing. Get housing. Without that, so. <laughs> Do you have any other questions, ma'am? Well, no. It's just from, from what I read in the notice, mm -hmm. I was concerned that there may not be any historical so, elements left. So based on our... sounds like there will be. Yeah. So yeah, there, there will be. So based on our demo delay um, ordinance, uh, bylaw, anytime something's removed from a historic building that is not being replaced exactly as it was and is not like for like in, in the exact same place, exact same location, the applicant has to file a notice of intent uh, for the demolition delay. So that's that's why the notice listed everything that was going to be touched, essentially. Uh, so although it's all being touched, it is I, I think um, you can appreciate he's he's restoring the historic items that he can and using historic grade um, clapboards to to um, uh, restore the building. So. Any other questions or comments? Um, okay. All right. If uh, the board is ready, we'll, uh, Chair will entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I move to close the public hearing. So Bob's made a motion. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by, was it Julia Lynn? I'm sorry. Either one. Doesn't matter. Let Julie have it this time. <laughs> All right. And seconded by Julie. All those in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. 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 Any in opposition? Hearing none. Motion carries. So, who would like to take a stab at the motion on the approval? I will. All right, Bob. Okay, I'll make the motion. Case number HH2023-05. Do you have the sheet? There? Yep, I do. Yeah, okay. um, NOI filing date January 5th, 2023. Date of hearing and vote February 15th, 2023. Property um, is 5 Bells Neck Road. Map 10, parcel G1, owner John Carey, applicant John Carey. Um, BCRD recording information, book 35178, page 256. Uh, subject building is uh, built in 1871, source uh, used to determine age as macros. Demolition pose is uh, partial. And the project work is uh, the project proposes partial demolition to relocate the front door, add windows, and uh, demolish the existing chimney. Uh, the historic significance is the building is historically significant and listed in the state historic register, the first checkbox, as well as the historic property inventory. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, notes. So, um, uh, going down to the proposed demolition would not destroy or substantially diminish the historic value significance of the building or buildings. Notes um, I want to just refer to the plan submitted. That will be um, done in, in accordance with the plan submitted attached to the. Um, to the determination application. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, 
no demolition delay period imposed. You have to put in there what board is in use? I'm sorry? What kind of um, siding oh, is in use? Oh, yeah, that, that is not planned. Uh, under the conditions, we can put the um, hardy, uh, the plank. hardy plank lap siding, yeah. five inch exposure, smooth. Okay, smooth. slow down for me. Hardy, <laughs> plank. hardy plank lap siding. Plank or siding. lap siding. Five inch exposure. Five inch exposure. White? Oh, well, it's art. It come, you're not going to paint it Arctic white. You're going to go with that color? Most likely. So then you yeah. match the rest to go. So Arctic yeah. white. And that's a proprietary color through that company. Okay, so we have subject to the um, subject to the project as proposed in the application, and Hardy plank lap siding, five inch exposure, Arctic white um, foundation to be um, brick veneer. Brick veneer. That brick veneer. that was voted on previously. Yeah, I'm just going to reiterate it. Okay, so we have a motion made by Bob. Second. There's a second by Brendan. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition? Hearing none, motion carries. Good luck. Good luck. That's it. That's, That's it. Good. Go, go, Just go. dotting the I's and crossing the T's. <laughs> I got zoning board next, so we're not there yet. Good luck. Thank you. Good guys. luck with everything. I know. Good luck. I appreciate it. Uh, 15, 20, 20. Okay. Next item on our agenda we'll open the public hearing for HH 2023 06. Darren Tan Tangeman? Yes. Thank you. Owner. Uh, has applied for a certificate of appropriateness to alter a building or structure in the Harwich Center Historic District. Alterations to include trim, siding, doors, and paint color. The subject property is 705. The subject property is 705 Main Street, Map 40, Parcel Y5. Good evening. Please state your name for the record, please. Good evening, Chair and Commission. My name is Darren Tansman. I'm the owner of 705 Main Street. And if you could go through your application for us. It's just, just qu as a quick overview, um, I sought uh, planning commission approval for the, the, the building to be changed to a commercial mixed use building where the upstairs would become a two bedroom, a two bedroom apartment. As a result of that, my re registered design professional designed, uh, had to design it to meet uh, fire code. And so the, there is a staircase that has to be an egress, a primary egress that has to be um, engineered and, and constructed that would allow for uh, that for that second floor apartment. The second floor apartment is identified in the plans. Um, there's an e I just got a notification. Um, we're also going through the approval for the building, the commercial building permit at the same time. And there was a note from um, Mr. Wingard that we have a need for potential change in the in the location of the egress. It would need to likely go actually out the front of the building. There, if you look at the jog on the building. Um, you, you see like the, the L shape, mm -hmm. the jog to the right, that where the staircase is, that the door will likely probably have to come underneath the staircase on the, on the first floor and out the front. Um, that's the only way that the egress would, would actually, actually work because there's only 1.6 feet, 8 feet um, on that, on that, um, uh, on the Alley. property line, the property line. Yeah. So the... So the, the intent was to use a very similar uh, 36 by 80 uh, door, six panel door um, as an egress door that would look very similar to what is at the, se the seal next door that they're using for their second floor apartments as well. Um, and uh, paint it in the color that you have, the color that I provided, the historic color that was present on the building when I purchased it. Um, the intent would also re re retain the same white for the trim uh, the door would be that same that same bluish gray color, um, and that would be essentially the changes. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to. Have, I'm gonna, it looks like I'm going to have to have my re registered design professional 
re, like redo the plans because I just got this a couple days ago, but and probably do a continuance to next meeting, um, which will delay the construction, uh, obviously, and the permit. Um, but I would like to get any input I can from you so that when we do those changes, that it, it's something that you would be willing to approve. Okay. So Please. again, explain where the exit door would be. It'd actually be facing Main Street? Uh, yeah, so you have... I mean, you have on the left. Yeah, you know, the seal is. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. So in the, yeah. our building's right next to it. Right down the middle is, the, is, a, is a gravel walkway. Right. The, the ours is closer to the property line than the seals is oh. and so they have their two their two doors for their apartments um, mm -hmm. that are right there they're facing our building yeah um, my intent was just to have that door right, right directly across it when that door opens it goes it crosses the property line so the building commissioner has, has stated that in the other side. Yeah. Yes, so correct. in this first drawing n2 that yeah. gets moved to the front here. It would, yeah, right. It, that would just come underneath the steps, yep. underneath the steps, and okay. would go out the front. Let me see. I don't. It goes here. Yeah. I know. I had That's to figure out what it was. Right there. Yeah. I have the same. I have the Let same issue with show it. Show us. Can you show us? Yeah. So instead of being here, this is the property it's line. Right it's yeah. going here instead. So oh. swing out that way. Oh. But you'll see it from the street. It'll be oh, a direct yeah. shot. Yeah. Right, so but it's no, not it, but it's not the at no, the front no, door. No, no, no. I I that's, that's what I was having a hard time with. That's what I was having a hard time with. I'm like, how are you going to put it on the, the front door? door? I just got this recommendation. Yeah, this is where function over aesthetic steps in, so. No. Right. <laughs> right. It's it really it's the only place I can place the door um, yeah. and make it work. So, um, there's a uh, there's a flower bed in that area with a with a public um, uh, bench out there as well, yeah, yeah. so that's where we'd be. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, there, you know, I will likely come back. I've got to get. Si I think the signage need to be approved to the store commission as well. Yeah. So we'll probably bring s uh, retail signage that will need to be approved. Yeah. Um, the I, the if you look at N nine on the far left hand side, there is a staircase there right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That staircase is just short of. The width required by the new building code. Uh, <laughs> so I, I may, I, I believe I'm being rec one of the recommendations from Mr. Wingard is to, ex to make that fit the IBC 1011 uh, requirements so that the secondary egress from upstairs is wide enough. So that I would use, likely use the same materials um, and colors. Uh, I, ju I would just, it would just end up having to be slightly wider by about five inches. Um. This is the stairway to the left. That's an open stairway now. No, yes, correct. Yeah. It comes out of the front uh, of the building. Right, yeah. and and that, um, do you have to make that enclosed or anything? I, uh, not based on what I have. It's just that you're going to have to make it wider. Yeah, wider. wider. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. It all sounds. I mean, yeah. Sounds good to me. Yeah. 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 Um, but you're right. You probably have to come back anyway. So <laughs> I don't know if you just want to do it continuance. If that be easier. So we certainly can. I mean, the signage probably needs a separate application because it wasn't advertised. True. Yeah. Um, but we generally meet on the the um, third Wednesday March of the 15th, month. March fifteenth, I show is the next date for your. So that's one that would, would like be our next. So we can so. we can continue to then if you think you'd be ready by then. I think I can. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But all are you just looking for elevation and, and the change of the, where the location of the door would be? Is there anything yeah. else you would? You Correct. Need? So historic district with a, with the certificate of appropriateness, it's anything that's going to change on that on that historic building um, that we can see from a public street parking lot, you know, across the street around the corner. Yeah. Um, so any anything that's going to be seen from the outside is something that we that we um, need to know about to approve before it happens. Okay. All right. The. Yeah, th th this is the piece that really needs to be approved so I can actually get the building permit moving forward and get, get that stuff. So I'll get this done and I'll do a resubmission for your meeting in, uh, looks like it's month. the next month, March, April. It'll April, probably April, April, April by April. the time you get the advertising yeah. in. Yeah, really? So I'll, I'll yeah. get that one. Can't do it. Yeah, because the, the, the timing on the... The application, I think, would have had to have been in already to be advertised yeah, that, for the next the ninth, ninth meeting. The time, yeah. yeah, you just miss it. We just miss it on a, on a monthly basis. So um, that being said, I will entertain a motion to continue the public public hearing to March 15th, no earlier than 6 p.m. Sounds good. 
So Julie's made a motion. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> That's a motion. Okay. Um, Julie's made the motion. Bob seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition? Hearing none. The matter is continued till the 15th. Okay. Thanks. Good. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Just bring any drawings to you on that night. You can if drop you have them off. earlier. You can drop them off at the building department, and that, she'll get them to us. We'll do okay. we pick them up then we'll have them the to actually be able to look at them good. ahead of time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, continued to three fifteen. I do. I haven't. Do I? I thought I had the application. I put it someplace. Just bear with me. Is that it? Is that my decision? No. No, I wanted the decision so that I could just write on it that it's continued to the next meeting. You want mine? Yeah. I'm going to find it, Julie. Huh? I'm going to find it, Julie. Okay. <laughs> Here it is. I just put it underneath. Um. Oh, this is cool. Two, three, fifteen. All right, thank you. Um, next on the agenda, we have meeting minutes. So, did anybody want to make a motion to approve the meeting minutes from January 18th? I move that we approve the January 18th minutes. So, Bob's made a motion, Julie's seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition? Hearing none, motion carries. Um, I did not have success getting um, in touch with anybody about the um, about the DOT thing. I'm jumping uh, over it. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, um, just yeah. keep it for next time. I'm, I'm fine with it. I know we just asked what it kind of looked like, but yeah. Oh, is this for the safe? Yeah, yeah, yeah for the safe same. streets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I'm um, fine. I don't think we need to extend this. Anymore. All right. And then Brendan, did you want to talk about the historic signs? Can I do that now? You you can, but did you want to check and make sure you're okay? I know I'm okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so no yeah, so, so we can do that. real quickly, no, I drove me. around. No, Sorry, Julie. Yeah. <laughs> I was able to drive around and take a look at where all the signs are, and some are definitely missing, so that kind of sparked my interest, especially the one that's right across from my street. That <laughs> <laughs> was there, right? So <laughs> I, I didn't know what to do on which ones were missing. I was making notes over the last year and a half. So anyways, I ended up calling... Uh, DPW I spoke to Chris Nickerson the road manager and this program started about 25 years ago he mentioned Elizabeth Hugh which I'm not familiar with maybe Bob you are but she initiated the program to put the signs up for parking and most of the signs if you look in your, your second page you'll see what the signs look like one is mm -hmm. for parking mm -hmm. most of them are the parking with direction and there's only one that actually has a very nice you know, historic sign and that's the one on Sisson um, so 25 years ago, there was no budget for maintenance. So the way the DPW looks at it, if there's a lot of moss on it, they won't clean it, they remove it. If it's, you know, need repair, they just remove it. There's no, there's no budget there's no for replacing repair. It. At the time, there's no install charge. So he said that's probably something they probably would do again, but that's down the line. But if you take a look, the ones that I know that are missing is one on 39 and one on 124, and they, those have been taken down. Um, the other spots represent the signs that are here. It says one, two, three, four, five, six that are left. Um, and that's really, it's really to designate the parking, if you look at the, uh, the second page. So my question is, did Public Works put them up originally um, yep. free of charge? So they put them yep. up? From what um, Chris said, him and Elizabeth walked around, she pointed, they put him in place. It was that simple. Who paid for them? Um, that he didn't know. Right. He just know that he knows that they were paid for and he was told to put them in. So it was, you know, but this is 25 years ago, so right. it was yeah. great that right. he was actually got in touch with the guy right. who originally right. dug the holes. But, you know. Right. Well, there used to be one of these on uh, um, 39 in front of Brooks Park, yeah, and gone. it's gone. That's gone. Yeah. And there was one right, Definitely I thought, here. you know, where um, our Bowden's house yeah. is, no, there right was, there. Because yeah. that's I a great so historic house. I remember closer. being there. It's gone. Right. So right. I think here, as they, to see it. there's no budget that's for maintenance. Like so that's what they do. They just pull them. Well, I mean, so, so I don't know so if you want to. So I, I don't see why there, that isn't a question for administration to see about, you know, getting a budget to 
Can, can we use administrative funds for that? Um, CPC administrative funds? No. Don't we have some administrative? I don't funds? know what I don't know what we have okay. available at the moment. I thought we did have a little. Set we aside. may have some, Bob, but I, I will call and find out. Okay. Um, I typically do not ever see a bill like some like David at CPC sees bills and approves them. I never see anything like that. That's all handled yeah. elsewhere, and I think the um, the costs are typically absorbed. By you know some line items in the in the building department, uh -huh. so I will check. Sorry to mean to okay. cut you off there. Another reason we might want to see about getting some signs back up is since Harwich Center is now one of the two oh. cultural correct Agreed. districts. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And it, do we use them for parking or is it for <laughs> what would be the purpose? Of, you know, to celebrate welcoming people into the historic center or you know, add the parking as well. I mean, I definitely think they should, we should have the entering signs, the good bigger one. Yeah, that'd be nice. Without yeah. the parking, because to just let people know they're entering a historic You're district. in a historic yeah, district, exactly. Really cool. Exactly. Cool. One of the signs at Harwood's off 124, you take the left, and then you get to the end, and there's no sign to go anywhere. Obviously, you know, I know where to go, but you would yeah. not know. So <coughs> yeah. There must yeah. be a sign that was there yeah. that's missing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that yeah, if you didn't live around here, you wouldn't. You wouldn't right. No. Right. You know, you wouldn't. Yeah. Um, and, and you can't. If you're driving around, you'll drive right by one. Yeah, you will. Really, there's nothing. You don't. You don't see them. You really don't. I mean, I had to go around a couple of times just to make sure I had everything. See, I almost wonder if I, uh, you know, the old Harwich Red Raider color of a sign would be better than a cream colored sign, just because I think yeah. you might you might see Those it more. Those pictures aren't great, but. Yeah. Um, no, but I think yeah. they were like a they were like a tan color, like a cream right. tan. They yeah. blend yeah. right in. Yeah. Right, that, and that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like I think if it was a a red sign or a green sign or a some right. other color sign, you might notice yeah. it more. Yeah. Um, but, but it would be nice to have them at certain like coming down one twenty four, entering yeah. from thirty nine. You know, maybe even one up at Bank and Forest and Main Street itself. So I will um, ask. Prominent yeah, I, I think you should ask. John. I will ask a question yeah. and um, see Does what it, we have for for funds. That we've noticed that the historic district signs are what what was once there are, are quickly bless you disappearing, <laughs> and I was going to be <laughs> and then we can um, we'll go, go from there. Yeah. So we'll find out what we have for funds, and then we can find out you know what I'm we can do about it. I'm a little it. surprised that they say they don't maintain them because they maintain all their other signs. Understood. And yeah, they just they they, they replace them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, that was something Chris yes, said, do. you know, I, I, whether or not they do or not. But yeah. if it's beyond repair, if they can't repair it, they'll just take it down. Yeah. So, yeah. So we'll find it. We'll find out what we have available and we can go from there. Mm-hmm. Yes. What is this? This was in my packet. I all got it. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, it's just the announcement of the supplement meeting yeah. house? Yeah. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're just giving us up a date. Oh. Did I just skip There's over no, it? There's no action. I don't okay. Think no. From it. Did I skip over it? Sorry. Well, it sounds oh. like an interesting program. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know that no, I. Have I it. And I think she was kind of alerting to us that um, they need some money. Yeah, <laughs> I noticed that. I and talked about the siding in it. I don't. I don't even think I got it in my packet. I don't see it. Right. It's just a single page. Yeah, because it's not on the agenda. Right. There's four things. Friends of Thank you. So we can just read into the record if you don't mind. Then we received we a communication. Yeah. Yeah. We received a communication from the Friends of the South Howard Meeting House dated January 20th, 2023, uh, addressed to greeting member, greetings members. Please enjoy our serene New Year's photo of the stunning South Howard Meeting House. The peaceful view finds the meeting house quietly ready to begin another year of unusual events in keeping with our strong commitment to uh, presenting only the highest level of performing excellence for our Cape Cod community. We have been thrilled throughout the past year to welcome you to experience the most unforgettable chamber performances within our award-winning historic setting and unparalleled acoustics. Masterworks have come alive within our masterpieces at the Meeting House series, and we presented our first bluegrass concert with Two Bird Stone. We raise the roof with Scotland's Tannehill Weavers in our very own Celt uh, Celtic Riptide, um, howled through Halloween Unhinged, and celebrated Christmas with our ever-popular 
Chatham Fiddle Orchestra. Uh, we have also enjoyed hosting gatherings for many of our local nonprofit organizations throughout the past year. This upcoming year, we are thrilled to be planning for an amazing performance year like none other. Our Masterpiece series continues with the Lighthouse Chamber Players on April 2nd, and our widely popular Celtic Crossroads concert will be returning to our stage on March 18th and 19th. Our first Scottish Tartan Day will be held on April 22nd. And finally, we are excited to invite you to come sail back in time with us for Oh Captain, My Captain, our original musical drama, which will forever define this historic meeting house within our Har Harwich community and enthrall our audiences beyond imagination. This event is set for June 2023, performance dates to be posted. Watch for all of our upcoming announcements and exciting events, always posted on our website at southharwichmeetinghouse.com. Also, you may always send us your information to be included on our mailing list and email notifications and follow us on Facebook. This year, we face a critical need to repair and paint the exterior front facade of the Meeting House this coming spring. Therefore, all donations toward this important project will be beyond appreciated uh, as we work to maintain the Meeting House in a condition in keeping with its well-deserved recognition on the National Register of Historic Places. Thank you so much for your greatly appreciated gifts of donation, time, talent, and attendance throughout the past year. Please continue to share in our exciting future. Your support has allowed us to continue to restore maintain, protect, and develop outstanding performances for the historically significant Harwich treasure and bring exceptional joy to our community. Judith A. Ford, President and Artistic Director. So, that is out there for all to hear. And they did a lovely job on that building. Um, hearing nothing else, motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. I'll second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Not in opposition. We are adjourned. Thank you very much, folks. <laughs>